Hello there. In this video, we will try to learn how to fetch a record from the SQL Server. Now, this is a blank workbook. Nothing is there. Now, we want to fetch a record from the SQL Server in this sheet. Now, each and every day, you send reports to your manager and your boss. And obviously, the data should be coming from the SQL Server. Now, the point is, each and every day, you need to send the report maybe three times, four times, or five times. So why not prepare such a report so that you'll be able to help your manager and it will help your boss so that they will click on one button and they will get the report of the right data. Let me show you the example so it will be clear. In my SQL server, this is my SQL server and I have written a query which will fetch a record from the sales table, the current year sales and the last year sales. And the person's name includes and from where the resulting territory name. If I run this code, I will get around 14 records. Over here, first name, last name, and current year sales, and the last year sales, right? Now you can use where clause or having clause in your query as per your requirement. Now you are currently sending this kind of report to your manager and to your boss. So what we'll do? We will fetch the records directly from the Excel using VBA, and then assign the code with a button so that whenever your manager or your boss will click on the button, they will get the live data. Suppose, for example, if someone changed in the meantime, that means the sales, current year, all last years, that means whenever they will click on the button, they will get the valid data, that means the right data. Go back to your Excel sheet and first of all, press Alt F11 and go to the VBA page. And then all you need to do is, First, as you are taking data from outside of the Excel sheet, and it is from OLEDB. So all you have to do is you need to set the reference that means from the any server database, like Oracle database or SQL server database or MySQL server database. If you're trying to fetch the records from the server, so you need to set these Microsoft ActiveX data. Object 2.8 library. Right. So you need to just click this and press OK. That was set so that you are all good to go. Now, whenever we check it, it will automatically come up. So it's now ready. Now you need to write the code and write the code over here. So click on Insert and click on New Module. Now, Option Explicity, I'm removing this for the time being. So in Subject, I'm giving the data taken from SQL Server. And here I'm ready to fetch the record from the SQL server. And we also set the reference from over where? From reference and then Microsoft ActiveX object data. 2.8 library. And this is the main important thing. And if you don't select this, your query will not run and it will give you an error. So before you're taking any kind of records from the SQL server or Oracle database or MySQL, you need to set this reference. Now click on OK. Now we will write our code over here, and then I will explain to you the code line by line. So that detail helps you understand what the code is all about. I have the code. Let me copy the code and let me paste it over here. Now I've copied the code and pasted it in the VBA window. Now go on right now. I've declared a connection. I've also declared a record set also. I have declared the field also. This field means the field you are pulling up in your SQL syntax. And I've declared the syntax, what will be my SQL syntax, and then select start from this table. Select this from this table. I have declared a row that means from which row the record set will be pasted and which column the record set out will be pasted. And this workbook reference, WS, this workbook in this workbook. And then application.screenUpdating equal to false means what is happening in the background. Don't change it. Let the focus on the scene, what is happening in the background. Don't know the user. And then I have set the connection, new ADODB connection, then new ADOB record set. Record set means the data wherever the data is coming from, SQL Server, data is stored in this record set. And then I have declared a syntax, the same syntax I've written over here in my SQL Server. Having select p.firstname, p.lastname, then inner join to get the result of this query. Let me run this query, and we will get the results as there are almost 14 results. Coming then, we will say it is coming, and then same result, I want this in my Excel sheet using the VBA. So I've written the same syntax over here. Select 
P dot first name, last name, and then space and underscore helps you to write the code in multiple lines. Basically, if you want to write the code in a single line, then you can remove this and within the double quote, you can write your entire tool as work. But then what will happen? Now you need to scroll this type of so that you can see the entire code. I think this is the list of them. If you have the long syntax, then this and then space, underscore, and the right, and then cut it down in a small piece so that it looks good. And also, at the same time, it will help you give up the code. That means where the actual column name is not matching or something. Then you can declare the connection string. That means which connection. Your driver is SQL Server. Your server name is HP. That means my server name. Authenticated user means it is window authentication. I have the permission in MySQL Server, Windows Authentication, and it database equals AdventureWorks 2008 R2. It's a sample database from Microsoft. So you can change your server name. And if you don't know the server name, you can go back to your SQL Server and just write it down, select at server name, then you will get the server name from here. What is the SQL Server name? Actually, currently, it is that you are using that means HP. I have used the same name over here, okay, an authenticated user. But if you don't have the permission for the authenticated user, that means authenticated permission or user permission. Then you need to provide the username and password. And how will you give the username and password? Right. So I've already created the syntax for you. The server name, your server name. UID means username and PWD means password. And database means your database. Then I have connection timeout 30 seconds. That means if your SQL server is currently not running, it will look for through for 30 seconds. And if it's not running, then we will get a message for up to 30 seconds. And if it is running, then connection will open. Then open the SQL syntax, what you have written earlier. And then if no records is coming up, then means from your query zero record is coming up. Then it will say no matching records found. Then the connection will be closed and record set will be closed, connection will be closed and it exits the procedure. But if the record set is found, then it will start with row five, column number one, and then there is a row. And until the last row, it will paste it. It will look through the entire record set, right? And the connection will be closed and the record set will be closed. Now we're all ready to go. Now let me check whether if the code is running perfectly or not. Now in this C, row number five, I've declared from row number five and column number one, that means column A, the record set will be coming over here. Now go back to the server and run this code. The first name is coming up. David Campbell from Northwest and current year. Sales 1573012.98383 and the last year sales. Right. So we want the same result over here also. Let me run. Now go back to your sheet. Same name is coming over here. You can see and you can adjust all. Whatever you can do is now your code is working perfectly. Now all you need to do is you can set the button over here and aside this code with this button so that every time we click on the button, you will get the result. Right. Hello there. Now we have seen how the code is working and what the actual code works behind it. The data is coming from SQL Server, and we will create a new button and assign the code with this button. So that next time, once we'll click on this button, and it will populate the result in the Excel sheet, the, and the data will be coming from the SQL Server. Right. So you can go to Insert and click on Shape. I prefer this rounded rectangle, and changing the shape like this way. And for your report name, you can use Sales Report and make it more visible, home, bold, and OK. Now, whenever you click on sales report, this result set will be populated, OK? Now, after selecting this, right click on it and click on Assign Macro. And whenever rounded rectangle one will be clicked, what will happen? The new code, so new. I'm going to remove the option explicit. Then I will call that macro, which I've written earlier, right? So I'll copy the name and I will call this macro from this over here. So whenever I will click on my set or a button, it will call this macro. And this macro, what it actually does, you have already known. That means it will fetch the records from the SQL server, right? So let me close this and let me close this VBA window and let me delete the entire part. Delete. Now if I click on this button, that means the same result set will be coming over here, right? 
Now click on the sales report and it's working absolutely fantastic. So if you want to adjust your header or after that, if you want to make it bold or make it colorful, you can do it through macro. And for that, I will suggest you that first one time record the macro and see what is the code. And you can adjust this after the code so that it will work okay. Now, if you want to check from here, I have the code for you, the entire this one and how it actually works. And I will have to go back to the code window. Then after this code before end sub, I'm pasting this, right? So now I'm closing this. Now, if I run this, see? Okay. Now this type of format you need, you can record the macro and see what is the actual code and paste the bill after the actual code. That means before end sub, you can paste the code and it will work. So I think you have enjoyed the video and more videos in coming in our blogs. And please go through our blogs and give us your valuable feedback. Let us know also if you have any problems to work with anywhere in the code and we have always ready to help you out. And thank you very much for watching this video and more are coming soon. I hope you enjoyed our YouTube videos and I really, really appreciate that if you could subscribe to our videos which will also encourage me to give more such videos in the times to come and you can also watch some of our popular programs which have been liked by a lot of viewers. See you soon.